Number 150, folks, and I feel it already. It's going to be a good one. Logan Robinson here from Noel Game Day. Jason Parker, NBC6. Big game, James Coleman. 36 degrees, and, man, I'm going to have to go to him to just run down the list of all the media that you can find him on. It's uh, pretty impressive. <laughs> Boys, how are we doing tonight? Doing good, doing good. James, quick question for you, actually, real quick. I'm just filling out so the, this paperwork right here. I got to do something because there's this job that opened up as the next play-by-play -play voice for Florida State. Oh. Would you call me a voice of the, your generation? Like, would you describe me as the voice of the people? Would You're not the voice of college like football. That's all I know. Stay away from football. that one. You trademark <laughs> that. That's fine. So, James, would you call me a voice of the people? A voice of reason. Voice of reason. Thank you, Art. So, voice of reason. <laughs> All right. So, Logan, for qualifications, I put down keeping it real, keeping Logan honest, and ripping Mike Norvell. Would you put those guys three qualifications? You think that would help? For you, yeah. I don't know if the last one would work too well. You don't for think you. I should. You don't no, think I should. All right. No, but I would say I do think it's mandatory to have a 12 pack to whoever the commentator is in the booth for next season. So they I must mean, have a 12 pack of beer with them. I mean, I'm just saying, Logan, are you interested? <sighs> well, if there's 12 packs involved. Um, I'm gonna have to talk to them because we got to get 24 okay. pack. 24. Bert, pack. I, I want to thank both these guys for showing up this week. Last week, Mark and I, <laughs> Mark, Mark was on location live with the Mama Voice of College Football, Mama Rogers, the voice of College Football. Uh, so shout, shout out to Mama Rogers there, back back in Ohio on that one. But both not exactly us, what we call her, but sure. We're, we're, gonna go with, we're, gonna go with, we're gonna go with Mama Rogers from this point on. But James, we're finally happy. James got his Wi-Fi fixed. We're finally happy. The city of Jacksonville helped out with that one. So. And it was Logan. my Bluetooth, and 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 Logan, we had we we had some issues with that on the spaces yeah. yesterday too, man. I just, I swear, <laughs> man, I'm not anywhere near as techni technologically in that as he comes it. off, man. I get it. And most importantly, Logan didn't fall off a cruise ship. Let's let's get that's right. He gets the monster top for not falling off a cruise ship. It was close. It was very, 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 very close multiple times. But um, that's why people restrict you from drinking more. So uh, the bar stops around two, and that's when it's time to go ahead and chill out and find the liquor that you snuck onto the cruise to drink that. Um, but, yeah, we made it through getting the voice back. But it feels good. Football's happening. Spring. Got to see James yesterday. He's driving every other day to Tallahassee to come see me. So um, Damn. it's working out. It's with, those well. with those gas prices, damn, James. <laughs> it's, it's right. I think it's going to – like, they're going to probably announce that they're going to give you uh, X amount percent more. They're going to – it's really – man, it's, it's a write-off. Like, I don't – Let's go. Let's go. I like what I, I own my own business. Like, I'm either going to pay it in taxes or I'm going to pay it in gas. <laughs> oh, let me write that down real quick. How to – Yeah, right. That's James. it. Oh, I like it. There we go. How to beat the system. I'm How working on my taxes tonight, so maybe I need to talk to James before I Seriously? do that. I can get you a ten thousand dollar refund. Well, might well, go to jail, but <laughs> hard, let's hard transitions. Spring football. Transition. I'm, I'm not that much in need of ten grand. <laughs> not quite that much. I'm not doing that bad. Oh my god! Uh, spring is here, though, baby. Mark. Spring is here. All right, Logan, tee us up, and then James can jump in because you boys have been at uh, spring football and soaking it up. Sorry. It feels good. I know, Jason, you're down there in the dumps. It's okay. Though. That new camera, though, is looking good, though. I got to yeah, say. The, the sharp. Good. I, think, I think I'm almost HD ready. Yeah, no, you're you're there. But, yeah, no, uh, spring practice is back. It feels good to be back into the groove. Norvell spoke yesterday, and maybe he doesn't feel like some of the players are maybe back into the groove. But I think some of that is – Coach Speak, he said that he saw a few things in yesterday's practice of being a little kind of off, up and down. But, you know, you saw some guys making some plays, and um, maybe there were some things that he saw that I didn't. But I didn't see too much of a major change from the pe previous practices, but it is expected. You know, James, with coming back from spring break, you know, things are going to look a little sloppy, definitely after a full week off, no workouts, uh, yada, yada, yada. So it's not too – crazy of a shocker there but you know we got to see uh, a good start of spring camp in my opinion i think there's a lot of emphasis on also bringing visitors in to watch i know norvell talked about it yesterday too about you know they want to run these practices in the afternoon so then a lot of these schools a lot of these coaches these camp these um these trainers can come in bring their players and 
uh, show show the practices to them. So um, overall, the, the kind of emphasis on recruiting has been gigantic. James, you saw it yesterday. I mean, it had to have been two two bus two buses, three buses of recruits that seemed to be on campus. It was almost more than what we saw on the first day of spring practice. Um, I mean, it was absolutely craziness yesterday. But um, you know, I don't think really. Out of yesterday, nothing too crazy stand outish. I mean, you got to see Greedy Vance with another interception, who I thought had a slower start to spring, and now, hello, there's 21. He's kind of a gnat, and you talked about, I think, on the spaces yesterday, James, about he's a smaller guy, but he's just kind of just gets in your face. He's chirpy, and he kind of reminds me of how Asante Samuel Jr. was his second year going into that spring, where just kind of you know talkative gets in your ear wins the reps and you know he caught one which would he probably would have taken back for six he probably had a better view of that on the sideline james but um you know guys like jared verse continuing to make plays daughtry richardson i saw make two really good back-to-back -back reps um against a defensive end and uh you know things got chirpy and you know that's football i don't uh, that's how it that's how it should be unless it's a little over the top but you know it was chirpy after one rep, and then what does Coach Atkins and Odell Higgins do? We run it back again, and those guys got after it, but Daughtry Rich Richardson won both of his reps. I think he's been a star of that freshman group. Um, but, James, anything more? Um, there's a few more people I have listed, but if you want to note on some things, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, it's um going back to kind of how you started, um, uh, and I'm good. So, like, I don't – I'm not a, I'm not a fan. I get it, but I'm not a fan of, like – of, of interrupting your spring ball um because so much can which unfortunately um i'm grateful that winston's right is here um you know I, there's some things that i got a chance to see the video and of the actual footage of the wreck and oh my god like i've told people in the fifth quarter i'm like you guys are worried about the wrong stuff like forget if he's going to play in the fall i'm just hoping he he's able to like regain strength and be able to just be a, if he's a functional you know, I'm adult and able to live life. I, I, I'm going to be grateful for that because, man, when I tell you it just looked like you saw you, like a car evaporate, like that's – like just the fact that nobody passed is a, is a, is a blessing in of itself. But, um, you know, you're not saying that couldn't happen when you're not on spring break, but it's just – you know, it's just so many things could go wrong. So, I, And I like kind of continuity, but um, what I will say is, like, I get what Mike, Mike Norvell was saying. And, you know, it's just when you put the pads back on, there is some rust. So um, you, you saw some guys with um, non-contact jer jerseys on. Um, help me with um, the names. Um, Fort, the Arizona State kid, uh, the, 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 the guy is very long, like 6'7". Um, I, I would have liked to have seen him um, without that. Um, I don't know why. I just would have liked to see him, like, bang around a little bit. But I still like what he's doing in, in the, the different lengths and the speed in which they have at the wide receiver position. But to go back to the recruiting standpoint, my own, and I, I talked about this, my son's godfather is the head coach of a local school here in Jacksonville. And, you know, they have been on our guy, the guy who's like over recruiting, who's actually a hurricane fan, by the way, he's from Carroll city. Um, and the school's hurricane colors. So uh, they have been like on Bernie about, Hey, you need to get, um, God, why haven't we had guys come over to Jacksonville? And Bernie told me, he's like, I mean, Tallahassee, he's like, James has been there twice. Why didn't you ask him to bring somebody? So two coaches came over. We're going to all go back over on Tuesday again. And this is something that I think is unique and which could help bridge the gap that Mike has, like, that Mike kind of inadvertently gave to himself in 2020, not hiring enough Florida coaches, and then still trying to play catch up. It's after the practice, high school coaches are invited to come watch film of practice ask the questions why do you do things the way you do things why do you do this so now only two coaches took him up on that and that was my, my son's godfather and bernie and but they literally got a chance to understand and when i when i tell you i i heard nothing but glowing remarks about their interaction with mike norvell he's like no other coach has given me that kind of um that kind of time and so now and there's a couple kids that 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 he has that Florida State's going to want in the next couple of years. So, you know, they're going to go to Georgia this weekend. And I'm not suggesting that Kirby Kirby's a good guy, too. I know I've known Kirby almost my entire adult life. 
But when it comes down to it, if Kirby's like, all right, okay, cool, we get the kid, we're, we're Georgia, we get him, we get him. But like now it's going to be like, all right, just imagine there's you got a coach that's going to literally, I'm biased. I write nationally, I talk about anybody, but there's going to always be a, all right, kid, you need to go to Florida State if, if I have to push a kid. But you got that, and you got coaches that, you know, feel like, hey, this guy kind of helped aid into my professional development. Um, and I thought that was nice. Yeah, Thomas County Central, that was out there. And I know Kiyata Watson is doing a good job. Of, they're doing themed days. So they're like Louisiana, a heavy Louisiana contingent. A heavy um, Atlanta Metro contingent came, I believe, was it last weekend? Last Friday, I believe they all came down. Um, you've got guys that, excuse me, two Fridays ago. You've got team, you've got like, they're really trying to make sure that a lot of guys um, come over. So it's unique in recruiting. And it's very personable. And um, and also the good thing is my son's godfather got a chance to, you know, it made me feel like I was bigger than what I really am. But but a funny thing, and Logan could probably tell you when when the few when when the franchise, my oldest son, walks on the field, every FSU coach knows who he is, they all acknowledge him. And I told people like that's not because he's my son. Like they actually I I don't remember my clients. But the fact that they can remember, hell, I forget my son's name sometimes. But the fact that they're able to, you know, remember these things and, 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 and talk about these things, I think are it just shows that they're always recruiting. And, you know, it's nothing like crazy to write about. But, you know, you know, I know people in the chat might talk about that. But I'm going to tell you this as a dad, man, that kind of makes you feel good, man. Like, it's like, it, you know, I'm still going to do my job. And if he calls a bad play, I'm still going to say a bad play. But, like, I'm a sucker for my kids, man. Like the Godfather, um, like Don Corleone said, you know, I, I I spoil my kids. They talk when they should listen, and, and you know, but you know, I'm, I, I live through my kids, so that was good. But going to the football X's and O's part of it, uh, this kid Benson, man, I I am I am intrigued, man. Like I he that's a large man, dog. Um, I so 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 for you, Jason, to, to ease your mind, right? Because I know I'm with you, bro. What I do? No, I'm just saying, like, just the re. I made a comment a couple weeks ago, and I got kind of lit up on both sides of the pendulum. Like the people who who want to be um, juice juice boxes and lollipops uh -huh. and positive about everything, and then That's the people that are the people that are negative. So they both used my tweet. And I just was saying it just looks different. Like it 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 does still. But like I go out there and when I the first group I always watch is the running backs because I played that. And I'm looking at guys and man, it kind of looked like it kind of looked like when I was there in the running back room. And I'm oh like, go look at that 12. And I'm not don't get me wrong, 12 is not gonna put another man in orbit anytime soon, but he got he, he kind of G-ish. Greg Jones-ish. Not well, Greg Jones. Well, not saying it's Greg Jones, but I'm saying it, well, who's the guy who um well, transferred out to Louisville? He came in. Um Washington, right? No, Torrance was with, 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 with no not I can't can't think of his name. He came in the 2001 recruiting class, but anyways, he was like a big back like G. And then I I, I look obviously um Trayshawn Ward's doing better as well. Um, I like him. I think he's he's got an extra gear and in pads. So the first I had to like, I got to see these guys in pads, man. I've been seeing them in shorts. Like, let me see what happened because you know everybody looks good in shorts, but we put them helmets on and them shoulder pads, man. People get a little, people start kind of going in the back of the line and don't want to get no contact, and, and they bang a little bit. Um, Amari Gainer. Um, better in pads than he did when I saw him last time. And, I, and you know, Amari, I'm a huge Amari Gander fan, but um, Amari had an opportunity to put a kid in the infirmary. Um, if it would have been a game, he would have definitely, it would have definitely been a big hit. Kalen Deloach is looking good. I mean, we got guys that looked the part, and we haven't had that in a while. And I just, it, it's, it just. I got to see it one more time before I could just – I can't I, – I'm too skeptical. But it's cool to actually look at an offensive line and see five linemen that look like, okay, those five linemen, at least from a bodybuilding type, can play anyway. Now, the problem is we don't have 12. 
we've got five. <laughs> well, we got about seven. We have seven offensive linemen that, from a pure physical standpoint, look like they can contribute today. And, you know, so that you're still behind. But that's kind of just what I've been looking at. But I think you talked about Jared Verse. I took some pictures and put it in fifth quarter. Um, it's a grown-ass man, um, McClendon. Um, I, I remember he looked really good in shorts on pass rush stuff. But, like, in full pads, he looks just as good. He's very explosive, got some moves. Um, and you've got some de- – the defensive end position has gotten developed. Like, you know, I wish we could recruit a little bit better there. But as far as the guys that we brought in from the transfer portal and the development of guys who have been on this roster already, mm-hmm. it's actually, you know, JP gets a hard time. Like I think because he's kind of a – he reminds me, was it, I think it's the Toucan. Was it the Toucan? And, um, the Parrot in um, the Lion King. The way his voice is, um, it's just really different. I'm sorry, just this is the only thing I can describe it. And every time I hear him talking, that's what it reminds me. Do we really just make a Lion King reference? It's a great movie. It's, just, it's, it's one of the greatest movies. Movie. Phenomenal it's movie. one of the greatest movies of all time. I don't know if Logan got it to is. see it. It is, it is, it is, it is. Yeah, I was. Uh, like, I had to watch it about 83 times. Yeah, so, was, so, so I was 10, I think, when Lion King came out. Yeah. But like you know, it's. But I, th- I think the defensive end position is doing well in 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 a position that I think could either you know either is going to be a home run. Or it's gonna be, it's gonna be a, a source of contention on this team is the DB position, but there's so much competition in that room, and so many um so many A type personalities in that room, good or bad, that man, this is either going they either gonna like really iron sharpens iron each other, or they're gonna burn that whole building down. But it's it's just but it's all in the spirit of competition. Mark, do were you gonna say something? Because I have a question for both guys, real quick. I've got a quick question for James, just because there's something he said in there that kind of caught my attention. There was it was all great, but even at a place like Florida State, there are guys that shy away from stepping up and showing what they can do. Listen, man, I my son. Shout out to those who serve that listen to your thing. My son's mother is um is my, as to quote like is is way tougher than I've ever been. Or most of the people I know, she um. She's actually currently um, serving the country right now. And, and she has this quote that when she sees a lot of people talk about guns and a lot of things like that, she says, I've been around some of the, the most well-trained people and we're trained to kill. But when them gun, when, <laughs> but when, but when you're, you know, when they had to pull over the, the convoys and you see people, you just see flares coming up from the mountains and people are shooting those same guys duck under the dunk under the Humvee and mm-hmm. don't shoot back and pray that when they make that phone call, that that phone call comes quick. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't matter who you are. It happens at Georgia, Alabama, and all that stuff. It's just a natural instinct. You, like, think about it like this. You're being asked to run full speed. You're uh, full speed into another large mammal that's aggressive and not back away. And they're running full speed. The, body, the human body was not designed for two people to go 20 miles per hour running into each other. <laughs> so... Mm-hmm. You got to be a certain type of like I got. That's why I tell people when they interact with me on Twitter, I, I'm very sane. But man, you got to be like if I switch like to that old mode, like what's stopping me from from breaking your neck? Because I was trained to do this, and like so that's what these guys are doing. And sometimes, you know, that other guy, man, you know, his bang is a little bit more than your bang that day, and. The beautiful, the beautiful and weird thing about football is that you get cheered to impose your will onto another man. And what do you do when that man is really whooping your A? <laughs> you can't fight. You can't just yell at him and tell him, please, sir, stop. Like, because I, would, if you told me that, I'm going to do it more mm-hmm. and enjoy it. So, I mean, that's just the, the, the but, but I think, um, you know, it's more of the skill guys, the, 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 the DBs and, the wide receivers, but to Logan's point, the um, the one who I, I joked, I made a joke and said, um, what's his name? Greedy Vance is built yep. like um Antonio Cromartie Jr. Um, and anybody who knows little AJ, he he ain't got daddy size yet. Mm-hmm. AJ might be the same size as my eight year old right now. He's gonna be good when he hits puberty, but it ain't happening. Mm-hmm. And Greedy Vance is about the same size as my eight year old out there, who actually. Who, by the way, got involved and almost made a tackle on Malik McClain on accident? Um, I almost lost the son, actually, all jokes aside. <laughs> Malik almost ended up. But but Greedy, I saw him try to get involved in the in, in run game. And Portier, um, 
48 uh, uh, baptizers is what we said. He put them, he well, put the paws on them and, and dropped them. So, first of all, we're happy you didn't lose a son. We're happy you still have all your children with you at this moment. So, Amen. quick question for both of you. Um, I want to start with you, James. Going back to what you said at the start when you talked about Winston Wright. Obviously, you know, Norvell talked about it earlier. Did we lose James? No, I'm here. Okay, James, still there. Yeah, I just had to check something. Okay, perfect, no problem. Turn the so, lights off. There we go, he turns mm -hmm. the lights off. So you talked about a little bit earlier about Winston Wright, obviously the horrific car accident that he had in Savannah uh, a couple weeks ago. I guess when Norvell talked about it a little bit, Go into, if you could go into a little bit of detail, like for people to understand just how bad it was and how you, know, you talk about it, how there, there's a chance where he may not play at all this season or he may not – play again like how serious was this car accident for so to give people an idea about it and then a question for both of you and i hate to to transition back to football off that topic but with him out of the equation for x amount of time who do you think this will open up the door for in the wide receiver room i mean it was i mean like let's put it like they, they were turning left mm. and the car ran a red light and was going full speed it just completely dinged them and um they had to use the jaws of life to open up and get some of the guys get some of the other people out of the car and his leg is you know he's probably gonna you know this is just me you know from what i was told and kind of deducing um using deductive reasoning for some of the stuff he's probably gonna have a still rod in his leg and you know those are things that there's a lot of complications that come with any surgery but in particular those surgeries like you have infections that you have to do you have to rehab you have to hope that everything takes the right way and um you know, any surgery that you have, you know, regardless of if it's like a football surgery or if it's one that was life altering like this, you um you gotta go back into action. So like you gotta actually have confidence that everything is going well. So um, you know, when I was telling everybody a lot of people took my critiques of Mackenzie Milton to heart in the wrong way, and it had nothing to do with that. It just my man just wasn't he just wasn't right, and rightfully so. Like, his injury was very traumatic on McKenzie Milton, and it's very difficult to come back from those things. So I'm looking at this same thing with Winston Wright, is that, you know, forget football for a second. Like, my man's – and, again, it's also coming from a guy who, who I, you know, literally, my doctor told my family – they asked my family on my birthday if I had arrangements made, like, for, for life or death. Like, so going when you're – and mine wasn't like that. I mean, I couldn't breathe. But, like, when you think you're going to die, like, your mindset goes to a different place, man. Like, you know, it, it, you got to – so you got to come back from that. You got to come back from knowing what your body used to be able to do from a physical perspective and, and knowing that it's going to take a little bit of time for you to be able to go to rehab to get even close to what you were. And then if you aren't what you were, having to live in the now, which is a very – which is something that, you know, you pray you get to – I'm not old, but you pray to get to my age. I can't get out the blocks like I used to, but I'm also 38, and I don't have to do it anymore. To have to face that when you're 20, 21 years old is um, it's something unique. So that's why I was just telling a lot of fans, like, I get we wanted him. We had high expectations, and I think he was going to be an excellent return man and, and possibly the guy to take the top off of the defense, which we haven't had in so long. But at the same time, I mean, it's got to be next man up. And what we, what we can do as a fan base is – is um is rally around rally around guys that that did make the commitment to us and make sure that he knows that even though he hasn't played a down at FSU that he's a seminal and um uh, mm -hmm. make sure you take care of you know take care of him and, and, and check in on him and, and, and don't forget about it. Mm -hmm. This is very traumatic. Now obviously yeah Alan are you were you asking that second question Jason? Yeah it's just basically now obviously going back from the football side with him being out for an extended period of time let's say let, let's let's mm -hmm. just assume worst case scenario he never plays for Florida State again. Obviously, Winston, you're a seminal. We will always support you for that. From the football aspect of it, who now will take? Who do you think will get it to take advantage of those reps that Winston would have had through spring ball and into the fall? I think uh, someone that has highlighted the start of spring and. I think was already stepping in that direction. I'll be honest with you because it kind of was a slower start for Winston anyways. The start of spring is going to be um, the transfer from Arizona State, and that's Johnny Wilson. He has been an absolute stun to me. I wasn't expecting the start for him at all, but like I had mentioned a couple of weeks ago, 
uh, at the early part of camp, he was my number one guy in that wide receiver room. I mean, yesterday you got to see a lot of those veterans show out and, and have a lot more consistency. But Johnny Wilson has been an absolute stud, and I think that's going to be the guy. If you're looking at, they're definitely a whole 180 and size for sure. I mean, they have different threats, but a guy that's going to jump into the rotation very early for Florida State is going to be Johnny Wilson. He's been excellent in his one-on-ones, combating on the sideline. Um, deep middle of the field he had back to back to back catches for uh, 20 yard gains uh, two weeks ago yeah he's a threat he's a major threat definitely in one-on-ones he's just not a greg carr and you throw it to the corner there to him this is a guy that you're going to be able to use all over the field and to match him up with some of these taller guys i mean that's one thing i noticed and you probably probably think the same thing james that that the whole conversation of having little wide receivers at florida state is over that is gone, and uh, definitely it's, it's about time, absolutely, but that is done. You've got Portier, you've got Malik McLean, you've got Johnny Wilson, you've got uh, um, Jordan Young, you've got some big time. Yeah, you've got, yeah, definitely Burrell, um, Baby Bolden. You know, it, you've got some size at wide receiver uh, this upcoming season, and that's something Florida State hasn't been able to say in a lot of years since going back to maybe Auden Tate and yeah, Tamara and Terry, but you haven't had like a combination of these guys. So, um, you know, it, it's really disappointing and sad, and I hope that Winston Wright – has a has a really good recovery and it seemed like Norvell said you know he's in good spirits and I hope to have him back here in Tal- Tallahassee soon uh, and now now it's next man up and there's a lot of veterans that showed out on on this last practice with Ja'Kai Douglas making the best grab of the day you also had Deuce Span I forgot to mention Deuce Span Deuce Span is also not a small guy either um, these are some big boys in the wide receiver room and actually made the play of the day, in my opinion, cut, uh, not the catch of the day, but the play of the day was A.J. Duffy, 50-yard bomb to do span, who's starting to kind of get some clicks there, just like how Greedy Vance has two transfers that are starting to get into a rhythm. So, um, yeah, that's the wide I'm receiver. I'm trying to think, was, was Deuce the one, was that the one when um, Duffy threw it on the run? And like Deuce kind of had to contour his body a little bit. It might have been. It was D. It was on y'all's it side of the field deep. where y'all are watching. It was the other practice field over there, and it was deep. And AJ yeah. Yeah, never there to celebrate with him. Yeah, it was um really like, and again, that's a kid who, again, local, not local kid, Lakewood High School. Shout out um to the greatest school in the universe, um the Spartans. Um, if you don't know, that's that they actually have that on the side of their school. Um. <laughs> And no, he's no, a, he, no, no, no shout outs to Pinellas County. Let's calm down. He, um, he was um, a quarterback in high school. Um, and he, you know, he's made the Corey Moore's his coach, good guy. I know Coach Moore very well. Um, I saw the first couple of days, I'm just like, man, eh, okay, you know, you transfer, don't really notice, it's not standing out. But then he, like, I, this practice, I did notice he did, he had a, he did have a good practice. And I think, uh, he's a guy who doesn't have a lot of, um, reps in, in practice at the wide receiver. So every day is like another day for him to um, get better. But his size and his speed are, you know, opportunities to be with Winston Wright, um, are opportunities. Another guy that I, I just haven't seen in their spring, but you don't really need to see this because, you know, spring is about people stepping up, yes. But it's also about getting guys who aren't acclimated to the system, into the system. And I can't just take away what Keyshawn Hilton has done in the past at Florida State. And, like, any given time, if Keyshawn's here in the fall, you know, this could be something that Keyshawn could do as a, as that slot guy, as that shifty guy. Um, but number four, the, the transfer from Oregon, I think, is another kid that will be – because that's what Winston Wright is. Let's be for real. Winston's not a a 6'6 guy. He was a guy who's um able to, you know, you know, go in motion. He's your slot guy. You also – you do want him to go deep. So when you know those are the who are the guys who more closely resemble that? That's your Keyshawn, that's your Michael Pittman, that's um you know what you just said. I call him Mega Mind, Jakai Douglas. It was funny to hear KY talk about his forehead, and I could joke about because I got a big yeah. ass forehead too. So like um it's just you know, but he's a speed guy. So those are the guys that you really want to see do that. But something that they did that I think when Jordan Travis and even AJ Duffy can tell you, Rotomaker, realize what defenses are trying to do to them. I think this will take them to the next level and what our defense was trying to do. So, everybody in seven on seven in the game, you know, it's kind of like baseball when they're doing the home runs. Chicks dig the long ball. 
Everybody wants to throw a deep. Everybody wants to throw a deep. Everybody wants to throw a deep. And they neglect the um the, the players who need love too. <laughs> they neglect the tight end, which our tight end was open numerous times. And then they don't want to throw it to, to throw it to the back. But a few times you hit the they hit the back out of the backfield and it's just it's 20 yards a pop. Um you make a guy miss and you're able, you may end up scoring. So I think you know those are the things that you know Mike Norvell and them are going to attempt to try to do. Um, but at Tuesday's practice, it was a lot of situational things. Um, they have a drill where they basically go second and long, and you got to make the first down. And so even if you make the first down on on the on second and long, you go third and six. So like each time they're making them go through these things in it's situational football, understanding um, what you're doing. They have literally um, third down drill, which they call cash down. And, you know, it's just, you know, really pressing in the mindset. And, and again, as I asked one of the players, you know, what's different about this year than it was last year? And they're like, the coaches don't have to cuss us out quite as much because now we kind of know what's expected and what to do. But, you know, it looks good. It's all exciting. It sounds great. But at the end of the day, if we are struggling to be the Duke Nessies of the world and, um, you know, we, we, we don't do what's necessary, it's all for not. But I do know this. We need – we need – Pray for people who pray. You know, I'm not going to knock anybody's faith, but I'm going to. We need all hands on deck. You know, y'all go get some holy water. Um, pray for Jordan Travis. Um, if you're a older black lady that lives in Tallahassee, let's feed this young man. Actually, not even a black lady, a southern lady. Like we need cornbread, collard greens, yams. You know, food that sticks to you. Because my guy is still, still not tiny. Because if he goes down, you know. I'm not going to say you should ever quit, but, you know, Mike might as well hand in his resignation because it's not going to be pretty. Even though Tate is getting better. Tate is getting better, but I'm going to call another group out. Seminole headlines, y'all got to stop that mess. Stop it. Stop <laughs> yeah, it. I'm gonna, I wanted to comment You're on insane. the quarterback. Yeah, we got to comment on the quarterback <laughs> thing because I'm seeing I'm, – I'm getting sent things all the time about the quarterback situation. I'm like – Am I not at the same practice? At, at I, the same the same thing. I I had the, I I'm in a DM thing on Twitter. I'm like, I'm I'm not at the same practice as some people are. I I don't know if it's I don't know. But I'll, what are you gonna say, Jason? I was just gonna say real quick that we we're past the half hour point, and I know. Oh we yeah. Missed the last couple of weeks of these, but but we have to do it. You gotta hit that dang like button, or florida state's not gonna get eight wins if we if if you hit the like button florida state's gonna get eight wins just because of this show right here so hit the like button and also subscribe and comment too. get, get some comments in here and i know there's a lot of questions in here too which we probably need to probably run through like Did you just do like it's a wonderful life if you hit the like button we get eight wins yep you get eight wins if you hit the like button that's angel, how it works the now angel gets its wings i mean honestly, yep. what is yeah 30 likes about 80 people watching maybe more i don't know logan i, I got i gotta think if you hit the like button you get eight wins for florida state if you join discord with an old no. game day that might be like an acc championship right there if you join but see now james is here too so if you join both discords you're probably looking at maybe oh james 10, got a 10. discord too you get 10 oh, sorry he's, man he's the one no, yeah, he's the, gonna pop his. He's his the one that too. started. He's the one that started. He's the pioneer. Okay, my bad. <laughs> we got to give James some love on here. He's he's here for us this week. We're not we, even paying this guy. Logan, we go sh- back. Go back on cruise, Logan. It's time no, we we share we share our Discord families, but a lot of our members are they're in both of them. So yeah. we're all we're all in the same groove. But I wanted to comment too on the quarterbacks because. Like I said, there's some crazy – they're uh, not crazy stuff, but I'm just seeing things left and right. And, you know, we put out an Instagram, a couple photos of JT today, and, you know, everybody wants A.J. Duffy to be the starter. And they said, this guy sucks. Get him out. I'm like, this guy sucks. I'm talking about Jordan Travis. And I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, like, if that's just what, like, kind of drugs people take on during the offseason. They don't understand that that kid saved multiple games last year. I'm wondering – I'm trying to figure out who they want to put in there. They want to put a true freshman quarterback with AJ Duffy, which, you know, coming in, there's a lot of hype for him to get in and maybe get that QB two spot. But I need people to understand that's QB two spot. That's the battle for. That's the battle right now. QB one's kind of is already locked down, and you know, going to Tate Rodemaker and AJ Duffy, you know, these guys still have a lot of work to do. And I and I see that with Coach Tokars being very hands on and. But when, when Jordan Travis is ripping it, he's ripping it, man. And, you know, the best part about him and the pocket, his pocket awareness, 
as I mean, it's so it's a whole 180 from what you see with Duffy. Duffy's a little antsy right now, and that's understandable. This is this is spring camp. This is how it should be for a true freshman. And then Tate Rodemaker kind of has it feels like some weights on on his ankle sometimes. Kind of just stays there in the pocket, and um, he's got the height advantage which JT doesn't have, but still kind of throwing some things. But I saw JT have a third read pass that went for 25 yards. I have not seen Jordan Travis do that in a while, and that was extremely impressive to see. Uh, yesterday while wow. um jared versus flying off the edge on him that was very impressive to see from jordan travis so i need some people to let's let's uh let, 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 let's calm down that whole thing there jordan travis is your is your starter um but you would like to see some pushes and some development there from aj duff and you see signs from rod maker here and there <laughs> But there, there's too much inconsistencies for me. I, I want to see some more strides made there from him. And, um, uh, you know, just taking care of the ball is a big thing there for 18. So uh, and then number 10, it's just learning the system, just understanding, building chemistry more with those wide receivers, tight ends, running backs. Um, but we, we got to we got to I know it's off season. I know it's off season, but we, we, we got to we got to. Slow it down just a tad. Logan, Logan, fans are stupid. We've we've established this <laughs> through the 150 shows that we've done here with Mark Rogers TV, the Winston College Football, and James can back up. Every single time, even in Florida State's dynasty era, every time the backup would come in, you know, mind you, this is a time when you had guys named Chris Winkie, guys named, you know, Thad Busby. I'm talking about going back in the day. Danny Cannell, guys who were leading us to ACC titles, national titles, top five rankings. And every time the backup would come in, the crowd would – would applaud louder than, than for the starting lineup. That's the way things go, is it's always going to root for the backup. I, there were idiot fans in the stands last year <laughs> when the Miami game. I'm sitting on the sideline shooting the Miami game. There's idiot Florida State fans yelling for Mackenzie Milton to go in and replace Jordan Travis when we were down 28-20. And all I'm sitting there thinking is, what the hell has Mackenzie Milton done to earn a spot to be able to play at that point? I'm sorry, Lieutenant Dan did not deserve to play at that point in the season. So, yes, there's a lot of idiot fans out there who are going to automatically <laughs> get on their keyboards and be keyboard warriors. They're going to comment on here. They're probably – I don't read our comments on here, but they're probably taking shots at me at this point. But, no, you are 100% correct. Jordan Travis is number one. He has not played himself out of the number one spot. Mm -hmm. And when we go eight and four, Mark is going to have to admit that Jordan Travis is in the top half of quarterbacks <laughs> today at ACC. That's all I'm saying. Mark Rogers, Mark Rogers on his Wednesday super day of doing – Every single team in college football, he's going to devote an hour to why Jordan Travis is the the. Uh, he's not, I don't want to use the comeback player of the year, <laughs> but I feel like it could be he could be the most most improved player according to Mark Rogers' team. I'm always thinking of the marketing angle, so oh, I think you've come up with something there, Jason. Jordan Travis could be my the 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 first ever voice of college football comeback player of the year. Oh, that would be content. Yeah, right I think, he definitely can, from? He I think he can be most, most improved. I think he can definitely. I can think he definitely can be most improved. Here's what. Let me just explain away the true freshman quarterback thing. It's not that and we've had this talked about on our on on this show before, Mark. I don't. I think this is where I'm, I miss NCAA college football. I truly do. Wow. But this is the problem of video games. See, video games and and let you be able to recruit guys. And you put a true freshman in on the video game. But there is literally no way to replicate what you're going to see in a Power 5 setting on that football field. You can't even practice it. My first game ever, I played against Miami. My first game that I played in was against the University of Miami in 2002 ESPN Classic game. The only way that I could tell you that even halfway describes how fast that game was was Jamie Foxx in any given Sunday when he first went in. All I saw was blurs. And I was a fullback. I only literally I literally had one guy to block in past situations and runs. I can only imagine how fast the game is for a quarterback who not only has to diagnose, you know, look at what the secondary is doing, try to get an understanding that they're running, cover one, two, three, some kind of hybrid, cover four, you know, all these different things. Are they bringing a blitz? Are they disguising this? Blah, blah, blah. On the top of, you've never seen, until you've seen a 6'4", 275-pound grown-ass man that runs a 4'5", it's easy to say that from the comfort of your home when you're watching it on TV, what they should and what they should not have done. 
that is terrifying. And you have to like you have to constantly swallow your your fear in order to go out there and function it. Now, every rep, every practice, every game, it gets slower and slower. But I can promise you that a lot of these guys aren't trying to not be any good. It's just sometimes the guy that's on the other side of you is better. Now, is our, our am I saying that Jordan Travis is is the you should put money down on him winning the Heisman Trophy? No. What I am saying though is in this situation, what Florida State has for what Mike Norvell needs to do for recruiting is stop playing musical chairs at the quarterback position, which they have done, and go in and make sure that you actively go. And this is the person you got. My high school coach Pat Campbell had this saying: "You dance with the lady you bring, no matter how she looks. You do not ditch her for the prom queen that is now showing you interest because her date ditched." I mean, his day, yeah. So, like, this is so with Travis, what does he do very well? He gives you the opportunity to use his arm, which everybody talked about how weak it was. But I told people, hey, he's got five touchdowns with this little post that they do, this post route that they do, where he throws around down the middle of the field, the guy catches it, and they score a touchdown. I don't know what it's called, but they do that really, really well. I said that going into last year. But what does he really have? Mike Norville has eight wins at Florida State. And he's got a lot of blowouts, but he even in some of the games where he doesn't get blown out, he's had a lot closer op- and opportunities to win. Who was the starting quarterback in all those things? Jordan Travis. At this point, I'm not messing that up by any means. I know that I need this guy to be thinking clearly, getting better, and I believe if he would have consistently played, you would have probably seen one of these. One, we're not losing to Jacksonville State because he came and saved us from losing to Jacksonville State in quarantine year. So now you're in a bowl game for people who hate JT. If he's consistently playing, you probably can play better against Wake Forest. You probably don't lose. I think it was the NC State we lost. We probably mm-hmm. don't lose the NC State if he's not yeah. hurt. Yeah. I think Florida State fans are so enamored with the number two and this Rudy and this underdog story that people believe is fantasy that you're you're getting lost on where we're at right now. Now again, we just haven't recruited well enough in that position. And you know, a lot of these these tales and and the, I know and here's what here's why I believe. And I'm not again, yeah, one thing Florida State has is a ton of sites that cover Florida State. It is very boring to run a paid, I'm telling you this as a guy who runs a subscription-based business. When there's no coaching search, your subs are down. When there's no, when you're not winning, your subs are down. When there's no quarterback position battle, your subs are down. When there's really nothing to talk about in the off season, you see the consistent thing? Your subs are down. Now, how do I get my subs to increase? By making people believe I have information that isn't really true in manufacturing stuff. Coaching searches. I told people against Miami, after Miami, stop it. Ain't a coach on this roster getting fired. I promise you that. The only thing that's going to happen is they may leave. You know what happened? Has anybody paid attention to what happened this offseason? Now the coach was fired. Two left to go get better jobs or increases, and people were promoted from within. Though on message boards, Insiders were telling now because now this is the stuff that guys like me, who was right, who was right until he was wrong, get crushed for. But everybody else gets to consistently lie to you about whatever, and there is no source. And Logan can tell you, I'm again, I go into the guys that I'm not media anymore. I'm a former player, but I'm not coming from an eighty thousand foot level. I'm literally walking on the field. I'm walking there talking to guys, and I can tell you, you know when people are going to get fired. Ta- using Miami again. So Miami last year, I got a vibe. Miami tags year after that game, you know what I knew was happening? Somebody was getting fired because it was doom and gloom. Nobody looked like they were happy to be there. Everybody was terrified. Um, so you got that quarterback stuff. Like people are telling me that Carson Beck is coming to Florida State. My business partner trains damn Carson Beck. If anybody would know if Carson Beck was leaving. Denny Thompson is going to know Carson Beck's leave. That's like damn near his son. It's just, it's just stop it. JT's the guy until he's not the guy. And I think JT is good enough to get you eight, nine wins, which that's what Florida State is at best. It's an eight, nine win team. 
We're not a national championship team. To, to put two things together that you just talked about, one was about 20 minutes ago when you were talking about how difficult it is to come back from serious injury when we were talking about Winston Wright and then relating that to, to Mackenzie Melton and the average fan not understanding how difficult that is. And then putting that together with, however you want to phrase it, a struggling quarterback in Jordan Travis and then looking at Mackenzie Milton's stat line from three and four years ago when he's throwing 40 touchdown passes at UCF, that's... When you put all that together, that's when you have a fan base that's clamoring for Mackenzie Milton and kind of denying what they've seen out of him and thinking that he's going to be the guy that threw 35 or 40 touchdowns. Well, here's what I said about this, Mark. It, it, uh, this the, tra- the transfer portal is dope, right? It, it, it puts in the front what's been happening in college football for years. But how – so people either transfer up in the situation to, like, let's say – but actually, this, I'll use a kid that we made. I still want. He said Travis Hunter goes out and balls out at JSU. And, um, and, and in three years, says, you know what? I'm going to go to Florida State. I'm going to go play against better competition for one year just to see what things are like. That makes sense. Everybody else is transferring out of a bad situation. If we were getting McKenzie Milton, the 40 touchdown McKenzie Milton, or if he was that healthy, you know what McKenzie Milton is not doing? He's not transferring. He's beating out his best friend to play quarterback. And Dylan Gabriel, who got hurt, and if Dylan Gabriel, well, Dylan Gabriel actually went to a better situation. Like that's how you should do it. But like, if I'm a Heisman Trophy candidate at my school, I am a god at UCF. Why in the hell would I leave? No, this, McKenzie got hurt. Dylan Gabriel performed at a high enough level, and McKenzie knew he couldn't beat him out. That's what happened. That's the truth. It's not sugarcoating it. Does it sound good? Does it make for the Disney movie that everybody wanted it to be? It's not. But I battled against, and actually it's funny because I just saw this guy's um, father-in-law. I had B.J. Dean was the other fullback. B.J. Dean was the starter when I came in as a redshirt freshman. I was a true freshman. We went back and forth the entire time I was at Florida State. I am a great friend with B.J. Dean. I ain't good enough friends with anybody to take, take food out of my mouth. They take money out of my pockets. Like either these, and if that's your kid, if that's that kid's mindset and that's his mentality, you know what? God bless you. I just don't want you representing my alma mater. And I don't mean that in a negative way. It's just I need winners. Winners don't say it's okay. You can have a turn, my best friend. Winners win. Hell, Bobby was a saint, and Bobby wouldn't even do that. I don't even think, but to be honest, I don't think Bobby would have would let the kid go. But it's just you know those are the things that I think Florida State fans are. Everything else is better than what we have right now. And that's just not a winner's mentality. Like, you got to develop. You got to look at what you got. And ride for your quarterback. Like, like who's the dude with the bad teeth that Miami had a couple years that didn't win anything, but they kept thinking he was good? Nicosi Perry. Perry. Like, be a, the one thing I'll tell you is, like, be like Miami fans. It doesn't matter who Miami puts out there. They are the greatest to ever play that position. Think about it this time last year. The Eric King was the god. He was the he's the he is Gino Toretta with athleticism. He is this. He is going to break all records. Then he got hurt, and then they put Van Dyke out there. Now Van Dyke is the greatest quarterback, the greatest ever. passer in Miami history. Ever, ever. Fans, FSU fans, have some pride. Stop being the guy, of Jesus. Like you know, it's let me be the realist. You go back whoever the hell we put out there, and you ride for them like damn Miami fans. Florida fans didn't even want Anthony Richardson. They wanted Carson Beck. They thought Anthony – I want to quote one guy, we left the projects to go to the suburbs. One of your favorite people from Florida. That was the description when Anthony Richardson decommitted from Florida, and they thought they were getting Carson Beck. But now do you know what – if you say so, try to say something bad about AR-15 right now to a Florida fan. They'll cut you out. AR-15 is Tim, is black Tim Tebow. James. Like, back your guys and stop being a punk. James, speaking of idiot Florida Sorry. fans. No, speaking of idiot Florida fans, George here, one of our idiot Florida fans who commentates all the time. Thank you, George. Who, I'm sorry. I We, we talked about quarterbacks they should go after. I, I agree with Mark that I think a quarterback will transfer in after the spring football. 
But can we can we can we smack George's theory out here? If Florida doesn't get Emory Jones, you guys are crazy. The Emory <laughs> Jones that the Emory Jones that kept us in the game. Did you watch the FSU Florida game? I'm not the sideline. No, no, actually, I'm talking about George. Commenting, it's a waste of time. We'll waste our last eight minutes commenting. Oh, Jesus, no, Emory no, can't no, hit no. the broad side of a barn, Man. let alone let alone throw a completion. People, I think, I think, do at start of maybe February, people start doing drugs because football is over in January, and you know the Super Bowl ends, and then people really start getting into whatever crazy stuff there is now. Now everything's starting to become legal, so that's even the scariest oh, thing, God. and so. Um, we got to keep an eye on that. I but the whole Jordan it. Travis thing, I don't, I don't, my thoughts on this is that you saw the progress from last year. He was competing for the job. He won it far, far and beyond McKenzie Milton. Did McKenzie Milton have a phenomenal drive there in Notre Dame? Uh, the Notre Dame game? Yeah, awesome. Uh, that was awesome, great stuff. And then you see what happens, and you see that NC State game, and you're like, whoo. I do miss Jordan Travis being out there. And it goes to show, too, you know, he goes 6-6 six and six in 2020. And then 2021, he goes 15-6. and six. Um, Absolutely just excelling as becoming a passer, percentage of 62.9 compared to 55 last year. Um, threw for 1,500 yards last year, and everybody called him just a running running back. What do you want the guy to do? And he also ran a half a grand last year. So what else, what, what else do you want him to do? And this is – his true first year being a starter going into spring camp like this too. So if you're going to bring in a transfer, it's going to be a backup. And I don't, I, I think too, we got to admit, and I think every FSU fan in here that is doing all the, like the Rada maker, the Duffy thing that's going crazy and uh, whatnot. I think everybody's a little spoiled off of what happened when Jameis and Coker came in and, you know, Jimbo didn't even start Jameis. People need to realize this Jimbo did not even put Jameis in there in 2012. Um, obviously, you had studs there with Manuel, but uh, you know that's just not a lot of fans going back to 2013, man. And that's always going to stay in everybody's brain. That's understandable, but th- this isn't. I mean, D- Duffy's not Jameis Winston. I hate to tell him. Not at all. But I, do, I, do, I, I, I just, do. I just, I just like, I just want to know, like, what are y'all like? What have y'all seen from Tate Rotomaker, like? To make you like, like I'll never for man. This may be me. I'm willing to admit this. I'm really willing to admit this. I will never forgive him for for the worst football I've ever. Well, until the play that um, uh, the kid that's complained about not getting no nils did against Jacksonville State the next year. I've never seen anything like Tate Runnemaker playing Jacksonville State. It looked like this kid had never played football before. Like, it's just, like, you saw that as a fan in a real football game. And you want to fix your lips on on Al Gore's internet to say that you believe he's going to be the guy? And if and you guys, like, I know they're not listening to this because a lot of them are arrogant. But, man, if you're listening to somebody that reports from FSU and they're telling you that Tate is playing to a, a starter level, they're lying to you, man. They're lying or they're drunk. Or they're watching some practice that nobody else is getting to. Maybe they're breaking the 20-hour rule. But from where I stood, he, he's better. But he's just not there. And it's okay. It's just it's not there. It's, some people are made to coach. Mm-hmm. And not everybody was designed to be a, a quarterback at this level and play. And I, I think he'll be a great coach one day. I want to end our 150th show with a question that I've wanted to ask James for 150 of these shows. Mm-hmm. As we end here, this is an important question because he brought it up here, and I want to start some trouble with some fan bases today. James, you said your first game was a, uh, that you played substantial time was against 2002 against Miami. Mm-hmm. Was that the best team you played against in your four years in Florida State? Because you played, we played at Notre Dame during your time. We played a couple of good Florida teams. Uh, we played Georgia in the Sugar Bowl. We played, you know, we played a lot of talented teams at that time. The ACC was starting to get a little bit better at that time. Was that Miami team the toughest team, the best team, whatever word you want to use that you played against in your four years at Florida State? Mm. Man, that's a tough one, man. Um, that's why I bring the questions. That's what. Don't think you know game is the only one that asks the tough questions. No, tough I'm questions. gonna say I'm gonna say this so that. Just to, not just to piss me. Don't. And this is with all due respect. Do it. Is anytime somebody says with all due respect, typically something disrespectful mm-hmm. is coming. <laughs> that 2002 and those 2003 Miami teams were loaded. Mm-hmm. 
and and I know that they're gonna people aren't gonna like this, but that 2003 North Carolina State team, man, like was really good. Like just for perspective, four first round draft picks on D line, a I think a second round draft pick at linebacker, two corners got drafted. You had Jericho Cotri who played for the Jets. You had Phillip Rivers. Everybody forgets how good T.A. McClendon was. I believe two of their offensive linemen got drafted as well. And uh, I'm just looking at it, and we went to um, – I think we went to double, o- double overtime. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was- man, 03. And it was – I mean, again, now Miami across the board from all four years, best team I've ever be- – built most talent. Yeah, they had 13 first-round draft picks on defense. But as a team, top to bottom, I mean, it's very – very tough to argue again. I mean, they have Mario Wood. Like, now everybody has a 6'6", 290-pound defensive end. But then Mario was like a – was was an anomaly, and he was a beast. And then um, Manny Lawson, I think that's his name, on the other side was your traditional 6'4", 260-pound DM. But, but, yeah, oh. I would go with the 03 NC State team. Hold on. Hold on. Let me look out the window. Wait. Yep, I see Miami fans' heads exploding. Oh, it's beautiful. You know, it's Miami beautiful. still thinks that wow. a team with one loss – is the greatest team, greatest well, national champion of all time. But, you know. The parade route is already set up for this year's championship parade down here because they've already won it. Mario Cristobal is the reason they're in the Sweet 16. If you listen to Miami fans down here, trust me, they're 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 acting really dumb. They're like George from the Gator Nation. Yeah, no disrespect. Well, whatever. I yeah, disrespect that's just my disrespect. that's my opinion. That's just my opinion. Disrespect them, James. James was on the field with those guys, so in no way can any of us discount what he just said because obviously he's going up against that kind of talent, and he just ran it down. And I remember all those guys, and yeah, they could all play. That NC State team in 02 did lose three games. I said 03, but yeah, you're right, though. But they did. And again, yeah, that's the hard part. It's like I, I'd i say they, were, they weren't as good. The Big East was weaker then. So like Miami would like the thing that Miami fans haven't realized is the worst thing that the worst thing that happened to them was moving to the ACC. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like when they moved to the ACC, it got the the and that, this is weird to say because of how good the SEC is and how good the Big Ten has gotten in other conferences. But like once the once the SEC once they moved from the Big East to the ACC, it was supposed to be was it another Canes championship? All was Canes what con- they all Canes conference. conference. That's right. it. And you've never won one. You played in one championship the entire time. And you guys kind of really messed up the whole thing because it was supposed to be Miami, Florida State, too, every year in Jacksonville, Florida. We messed it up so much that they moved the championship from Florida back up to Carolina because the sorry teams were playing it. Now, we we, we had our say in that, too, but I'm going to blame Miami as well. But I think – but, again, those Miami teams were – we're extremely good. Sean Taylor is probably one of the best players that I've um, that I've ever um, played against on the college level. Um, Vilma is amazing. Was amazingly smart and athletic. DJ Williams, um, great. Um, I forgot all the defense. Vince Wilford, for how big he like the only guy I've ever seen. Even when he takes plays off, you can't move him, and you don't know. But when he gives you four plays, it's going to be the most explosive four plays you've ever seen. Um, these guys are good, and they're very extremely talented. It's just, I don't know, man. That NC State team was wild. So um, that was just my – again, that's just my opinion on it. You know, they're – I would say those Miami team – Miami 2 is like a really close – a really, really, really close thing. All right, well, by Mark leaving, that means it's time for us to get the hell out of here. So, James, thank you for coming by. Logan, thank you guys for stopping by. Let's do this again next – let's do this again next Wednesday. What do you guys say? Logan, can you be sober enough? Logan, we can't hear you. You're muted. Oopsies. I was going to say we might have some scrimmage scoopage to, to unload. In scrimmage, here, so we'll scrimmage. see. Well, there's Next scrimmage Wednesday. on Saturday. Scrimmage on Saturday. Next Wednesday, 6 o'clock, complete scrimmage recap with Logan, James, Mark, myself, the whole gang. We'll see you next week. Yep. Adios, guys. Good night. <laughs>